been able to have a captive audience <laughs> in five or six years. Guess <laughs> what? <laughs> You're in for a treat. <laughs> and I don't have anybody waiting to say, oh, you spoke a long time last night. That wasn't good, because I'm my own boss now. <laughs> and Sue, when I was asked to do a uh, little speech for you. Little, little speech. So anyway, when I was asked to do something for Sue, I, I thought, oh, I can't do that. And then I started thinking about how long I've known Sue. Sue and I started together <laughs> so many moons ago, <laughs> he was about this high, and I was just the same height, maybe an inch <laughs> And I was Miss Hamilton, and she was Susan Hale. And Susan was in my class in grade 7 and 8 at Bridgemount, and I taught her the importance of good etiquette, how to set the table, and good nutrition, and she still follows that to this day. <laughs> she would tell me sometimes when we were at school together having lunch, see, I have, I have three groups here, see, just like you have. <laughs> and unfortunately, I, I wasn't that successful the whole, the whole way. Sue, <clears throat> to this day, does not know how to sew. She hates sewing with a passion. In fact, she would sometimes bring me some of her slacks to redo or remake. I remember quite fondly <clears throat> us sitting over the sewing machine, and she had a pair of crimpling pins. But if any of you know crimpling, they could use it to go to the moon and back. And it was stretching. You know, it was wonderful fabric. I don't know why they stopped making it. But we started with a pair of pants. <laughs> And she said, I want a pair of pants, I don't want a skirt. And I said, no problem. We very carefully sat, picked that out. How many times? Oh, oh six, least. seven, eight. I was patient. And <laughs> Sue had <a> skirt. <laughs> and from that day to this day, she does not sew. She doesn't go near a sewing machine. And the other thing I want to talk to you, Sue, and all the other retirees, why do they congratulate you when you're retiring? Are they congratulating you because you've reached the age to retire? Like, is that to be congratulated? Like, if I won the lotto, congratulations. But I had to retire to understand why the congratulations is appropriate. And for all of you out there who aren't ready to retire, Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Because <laughs> the rest of us, this is the way we go around. <laughs> we really, 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 we, we don't fake the smile. We smile all the time. It's really there. And the hardest part of retiring for me, and I've heard this from several people, is not retiring. It's the decision to retire. And once you make that decision, then you just like, wow. And the smile comes on, and the Colgate comes out, or teeth whitening if you need it, whatever. <laughs> and you just start smiling. So I am very honored to be here to, to do your little presentation tonight. I'll try to make it not, not too awful. <laughs> That was the intro. Sue, also, we came to know each other throughout our lives. Our lives touched. When I was pregnant for my second child, I was playing ukulele in a ukulele club at St. Paul's United Church in Riverview. And I look forward to getting out, even though I was playing the ukulele out through the end of the week. But we would play at the church, and we used to play these wonderful songs. And Sue was there. She was a young uh, teenage girl at that time, very shy. She looked almost like she looks now. She hasn't changed that much. And the thing I learned about Sue from my classes and also later was, Sue doesn't say very much unless you talk to her. 
when you start talking to her, she's got opinion, she's got a lot to say. And then sometimes you think, I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> she just goes. That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Sue's first teaching job. Now I'm going to go through this. It'll take me a few minutes. She's had a very career, and this is worth noting, because she's been in so many schools that the three schools I taught at is bananas compared to what she's done. Sue so, uh, started teaching at Riverview Middle, and then she went to Shediac Cape. That was her first year. She was doing supplying. She did grade five and six. And I should say that she got her B, B Ed and her BA from Stu uh, after, after going to Atlantic Baptist College. And she majored in English. She teaches a lot of science now. I don't know what the two have to do with each other, but that's why. Uh, Sue uh, went to, uh, after she started teaching, she moved to Woodstock after that little, after that, and she taught there at Centennial School, which they're pulling down. I don't know how old we are. So anyway, she started teaching there, and she has one, many one, wonderful, lovely memories of Woodstock. She loved it there. And then she met the love of her life, and she got married, and she moved to Ontario. And she was teaching in a place called, oh, it was called Nipigon and Red Rock. And the way they ran that, it was somewhere near Thunder Bay, and she taught all the subjects in, in, in three days. And then, guess what? She got to do it all over again for another three days. And that went on the whole year. And after that, uh, during that time, I believe her son Daniel came along. And he was her firstborn. And then uh, they moved to uh, around Cambridge, which was near uh, Kitchener, Waterloo. She taught there for eight years. And during that time, uh, Samuel was born, and also Margaret. Margaret was born in February of 1994, and Ray became very ill in, in uh, August of that same year, or a little bit later that year. And so here Sue is with three small kids, got a teaching job, a baby that's just not even walking, and she has to help her husband as he's recuperating. That's not an easy task. So she taught up there for a few more years, and she finally moved back to Moncton in 1999 for a couple of things. She, uh, her family was getting to the point where she needed to be back home, and she wanted to come home as well. New Brunswick has uh, roots pretty deep in most of us. If we go away, we like to come back most of us. And so she came back, and she was working at SMS, and supplying, and she was working for Pammy Constantine as a resource teacher. Now, if you know anything about Tammy, you know that she's uber, 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 uber organized. So when Sue walked in and sat down at her desk, here's all the meetings that she has to do for four months ahead, along with all the phone numbers and everything. Uh, Sue was pleased. That, that was all done for her, and she, she, she completed that time with no great effort on her part other than going to the meetings and doing all the work she had to do. Uh, she then went to Salisbury Middle School uh, to teach grade eight, or Riverview Middle School, excuse me, and then the next year she came back to us at Salisbury Middle School to teach a grade eight class. She became very ill at uh, Christmas of that year, and she was out for, I think it was a year or a year and a half before she came back full time. And when she came back full time, she started working at JMA. I hope I'm getting this all right. Uh, she started working at JMA, and she has loved working at JMA. She's worked there for the last 10 years, 10, 10 11 years. And she loved teaching high school. Uh, she is a vegetarian. She had a chance to teach environmental science. And Sue lives environmental science. 
You don't go anywhere with her and have a bottle of plastic water. She, she will dump it out and put it in a recycling bin. You have to have water in something that's recycled. She's, she lives environmental science. She is a vegetarian and she believes in all those things that the earth should be there for the next generation and everything. She doesn't make a big deal of it. She just lives it. Now that's just the second page. <laughs> that's just the second page. Um, now, I often watch some hockey games or whatever, and there's a very annoying energizer button on there. Did you ever see that little energizing mm -hmm. button? That's Sue. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sue. She doesn't stop. She, uh, her leg doesn't stop her. She's had a few problems since, her, since she was sick, but she doesn't stop. She goes and goes and goes. Some of the things that she's done uh, in the time that I was working with her, uh, we did drama. We were the costume lady and she was the producer producer with Gary Anderson. She also worked with Michael McArdle when he produced his very first big drama production, uh, Fame. She was going there all through her Christmas vacation. She worked on that. Sue also uh, had some fame as a, a chef. She made something called potato fudge. And she kept bringing it down for me to taste. And she made it to Halifax in the final uh, seven for the Maritimes, which is quite an accomplishment, I think. Uh, we also uh, did improv together, Sue and I, and we had a lot of fun doing improv. Some of our kids were our challenged kids, and I remember one particular tall man, young man, who we made into a tree. <laughs> and he was the best tree ever in improv. He was the best tree that kid and allowed him to be quiet. He did not move for the whole time. He was going that tree. He did not move. And it was just marvelous. We had a lot of fun. And a couple of times we went with Gary when he was doing uh, his presentations in Fredericton at Stu at the drama festival up there. And we, tried, we just told Bill and everybody how hard work it was, and we were really tired. <laughs> we had so much fun. <laughs> I didn't like him. So anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. She also did a few more plays afterwards with uh, the music teacher and one of the other drama teachers. But she's finally put that aside. So when I did a walking club together at dinner time, and we would walk, and the students would walk with us. We'd talk, and within the first three minutes, we'd be laughing and giggling, and we'd return to class very, very refreshed, because there's nothing like laughter to refresh you. She would come down sometimes with her lunch, and we would sit in the home ec room and enjoy our lunches together. And she would, we'd start off, you know, what you do? Oh my goodness, did you know what happened? Within three minutes, we'd be just killing ourselves with laughing because you all have situations in your classrooms where the ridiculous is happening or something is being said and you cannot laugh. We're not allowed to laugh. You have to bite your cheeks and bite your tongue. <laughs> when you start talking about it, it is so ridiculous and so funny. You just have to laugh. And that goes on on a daily basis in classes throughout the province. Uh, Sue also bowls with me. She's my alternate. <laughs> and you never know what to look at Sue, so, but she's competitive. <laughs> she bowls like 150. <laughs> they are, they are, we're going to ask me to be the spare. She was the spare. They were going to ask me to be the spare. <laughs> um, so she has been in my life quite a bit in the last few years. Now, not too many people know this because Sue's quiet, but she loves cars. <laughs> Do you know of anybody else that has had 47 cars? <laughs> 47 cars. And she has owned 47 cars. And 
I always thought that she should have a place there on Coverdale Road and call it Sue's Sporty Safe Car. <laughs> she can talk, she can up talk any salesman in Moncton when it comes to cars. Um, and Sue, <laughs> as a retiree this <laughs> year, on the snow days, I went down and I had to have something to do because my husband was driving me crazy. <laughs> so I thought of you <laughs> and I made you this little truck. You made it? I made it. Oh, wow. That's now, awesome. the tires don't go flat. The windshield wipers never frost up. <laughs> and oh, this is for you. You used to have a red Toyota truck that I love. That's why I thought of you when I was making that truck. Uh, Sue's done some cruises. Uh, the first cruise that we did kind of together was with Gary and his wife. Gary is a wonderful, wonderful cruise director. <laughs> Gary gets up every morning at 6 o'clock and Gary just smiles. <laughs> and Sue and I would have been up very late enjoying the social life on the boat until <laughs> 1.30 or 2. And she would get up and she'd just be like this. <laughs> and I'm oh, do we have to go? Yes, get up, we're going. She always was raring to go. And somebody told me today, and I'm sh I hope this is true, that you met Red Red the real Red Skelton on one of your cruises. Ooh. Not on the cruise, in, in, in Toronto. In Toronto, oh, okay. Sue so loves twice. Red Skelton. She absolutely adores him. Now, a few things. I'm, I'm only on page four, and I've got two more left to go, so be patient. Uh, I'm, I'll be through soon. Now, uh... Sue loves new technology. She's very into the media. In fact, about three or four years ago, she was at a yard sale and she found an eight track tape player. And she took it into her classroom and the tapes were there too. Remember those tapes? You plugged them in. She found an eight track tape player. The speakers were there. The tapes were in really good shape. She set it on the sill. And the kids wanted her to play it. So she, she played it while they were doing some of their work. <laughs> oh, Miss Arsenal, we look at this new technology. Where do you get this? <laughs> and Sue, Sue can stretch a dollar. I don't know if those new plastic dollars, whether she can do it. But I used to drive by a road every so often to see where her money tree was. Because <laughs> she can stretch a dollar around the corner and back down the other side of the block. She makes much, she does wonderful things with, with the money that she earns. And she can do things, I'm just sitting here, how does she do that? Well, she does it. She, she's really, really uh, good with her money. Um, and as the Energizer Bunny, <laughs> once you have got over being retired, because when you retire, sometimes you have to go through what we call getting ready to be retired, because we put a lot of time and tension into teaching all those years. When you're ready for that, here's the phone, we're going sporting, okay? And we don't have to worry about lessons. We don't have to worry about whether there's an exam to be marked. We don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, I have to get up tomorrow because I've got to be there early for that parent-teacher meeting. That's all through. I love snow days. <laughs> I just love them. I get up, I waltz around the house and put on some music. There was 14 of them this year. So I got a lot of <laughs> And I still love snow days, even though I'm not teaching anymore. I loved them when I was teaching because I considered them to be a gift. And we did, we sometimes we only had half a day. This year was an exception. That, that doesn't always happen. Um, but the thing is, they are a gift, and even now, I still get up and I just love snow days. I don't, snow doesn't depress me, it's just, I don't have to get out and drive in it anymore. That's a good thing. <laughs> Sue, I want to welcome you to the world of the retirees. It's a secret world. <laughs> it's a secret world of retired teachers. 
And when people ask me what I do, I say nothing. <laughs> and I just smile and I say, I'm a kept woman. <laughs> and they and they start like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> and I just say, Well, am I rich enough to be kept? <laughs> I want to congratulate you on being retired and reaching this wonderful time, because not everybody makes it, and I know you're going to enjoy it. I am. Thank you.